As a child, I came here often. Sometimes it was a school field trip, and other times my parents would take me here when they needed to get the kids out for a weekend activity. Now as a kid, it was always the dinosaurs that left the biggest impression on me. Especially this guy, the T-Rex that fascinated me and truthfully terrified me on my earliest visits every time I walked through the main entrance doors. But there was another exhibit, a hall of exhibits at this museum that I can remember walking through as a child. The display of all the gems and minerals that have been found throughout the Rocky Mountains just west of this museum in Denver. Now, truthfully, these halls didn't impress upon me quite like the dinosaurs as a child. But now, as an adult, this to me is the most impressive part of the entire museum. And of course, the beautiful gold of Colorado. And in particular, one very special room of gold where the rarest and the best from Colorado are kept. Now all of this gold came from the Colorado Rockies, but 99% of it was found at one very special location, Farncombe Hill, Breckenridge. And also found on Farncombe Hill and in a display case of its own, the largest piece of gold in Colorado's history, Tom's Baby. Named for the miner who found it, he would carried it down the hill into the town of Breckenridge in a blanket like a baby. Thus the name Tom's Baby for this 13 pound piece of crystallized gold. It's stunning. Absolutely stunning. I'll probably dream tonight I'm up on Farm Cone Hill metal detecting and I find the next Tom's baby. That might be a daydream. So for any gold enthusiast, this is really, uh, it's a love story. It's a love story of some of the best gold ever found out of Colorado, most certainly, but in the entire world, I'll say it, some of the best crystallized gold in the entire world. And it's all because of this man, John Campion. He was a part owner in the mine after Farncombe had made himself the richest man in Colorado. Uh, he, he would actually buy pieces from his miners. He would buy pieces, he already owned the mine, but he would put the best price on anyone who brought him a good piece of crystallized gold because he knew they would steal it. He knew they would high grade it because this stuff was so special. So he acquired these 100, 120 pieces that are in the museum. And it's the only reason this collection is together and is, is what it is at that museum is because he, he knew how special these pieces were and how rare they were. So I would encourage you, if you do get a chance to go to Denver, go to the Natural History Museum and go see this collection of gold. But one thing they can't do at the museum, and maybe that would be a suggestion if this museum ever watches it, is to put something under magnification because this gold gets really, really special when you see it under magnification. And I pulled about six or seven pieces out of the 120 that we have for sale on the website. I just gotta show you how good this gold is when you see it up close. There's really a couple different formations. I'm gonna show you the first one and I call these puzzle pieces. It's just my kind of nickname for them. I don't know what else to call them, but I think you'll agree. They kind of, they fit together like a puzzle. Or this one is particularly interesting. Describe it as wavy. It's kind of wavy patterned gold. But this is the difference between crystallized and crystalline gold is when you can really see structure to the gold like you do on this piece here. And most of this gold, I should say, is assaying right around 90%, which is, is very high for Colorado. Uh, into the 80s is what you can normally see from Colorado gold. So most of this gold was assaying at 90%. And just like in Denver, you can see how a piece like this 
is so wavy. It's these wavy leaves, but each one of them is very, very well crystallized with just a ton of structure to it. And the third piece is spoken for already. My friend Ed has staked claim on this piece. So Ed, I wanted to put this one in the video just because it's one of my favorite pieces. And it's really rare for me to get them where they're still on the shale rock. And that's because the prospector has etched all of these out of the shale rock. These weren't just found laying on the ground like this. They all had to be etched out of rock. And so this piece here, fantastic that it's still on the quartz rock here just this gold on this face really really beautiful piece the fourth one is one of my favorites truthfully and from a distance it just looks like a piece of crystalline gold uh, nothing truly special about it until you look at it under magnification when you look at it under magnification you see just how well crystallized it is, just how incredibly intricate and beautiful, especially right here on this top. Do you just look at this just fantastic crystallization uh, in this pattern. It's, it's all about pattern with crystallized gold, and that's how you just know it's something special and something different. This is truly one of my favorite pieces. Okay, here's another example of that puzzle piece I was talking about. This one, a little bit more chunky, a little bit more gritty, and a little bit more square pieces to it. Square formation, square patterning to it. But really, just a great little piece of leaf gold with great crystal structure on both sides. And the other formation that was a lot more rare to see up on Farncombe was the wire gold, the, the bird's nest gold. Truly some, some magnificent gold with these crisscrossing bird's nest wires. This piece in particular, I love, and it's, it's a fragile piece. It's probably the most fragile wire piece I have. I'm gonna flip it over and show you both sides, but I would recommend being very, very careful with this one. It's for looking only and not handling, not touching. But what a beautiful piece of gold. And the last wire is just one of my favorites. At the bottom, they're just flattened. And then they kind of go into this messy top of bird's nest wire gold. And you can see the distinct difference in the two. And truthfully, I think that right there might just be the thumbnail for this gold. This is truly a fantastic piece of wire gold. So this gold is truly some of the best in the world. I'm going to keep saying that. And I took you to Farm Cone Hill last episode. I'll link it here if you missed it. And that hill's been dormant for the most part, except for one group of prospectors. Over the last 35 years, over their summers, they've been spending metal detecting and finding these gold pieces. And then they've etched them out of the rock and they've presented the whole collection now. They're in their retirement years and they're looking to move this gold along. It was never for sale. It's never been shown until now. I'm incredibly fortunate I get to work with these folks and market this gold. So if you're looking for a piece of some of the most special gold in the world, we have it. GoldNuggetsForSale.com and GoldNuggetsSales.com. I put it on both websites. There's about 120 pieces. And it's truly, truly some of the best gold we've ever had. I'm going to leave it there. Appreciate you watching. Be well, be safe. Go check us out. We'll see you in the next video.